Okay, I've seen a bunch of articles, tweets, etc. stating that PenPot might be the Figma killer. And with the PenPot 2.0 release, which is the latest, biggest update yet, so I wanted to quick dive and take a look at every new feature and whether PenPot is now a much better competition to a tool like Figma and if some things are now better than Figma or not. So guys, in today's video, BenQ has bringing something really cool for designers like you and I. But more on that later in the video. Okay, so to begin with, people ask about pricing of a tool. Obviously, pricing page, which is here, showcases PenPot is 100% free and will be for a lifetime. Their entire page talks about how they are, first of all, open source project. When you talk about open source, tools like Blender, Firefox, Android, etc. come to mind because these are all very popular open source projects which are all free. If I go to their homepage, their first thing here is a link to the GitHub page. They have people contributing to their GitHub page as well as have all their code, all the files, folders, etc of their code laid out here. If you want to develop and add your own features to PenPot, that is possible if you, of course, know how to code. Okay, so signing into PenPot in my browser, the first feature that we get to see is a auto layout like feature is called flex layout or grid layouts, compatible with CSS. So the code will be perfectly compatible with CSS grids, including things like Flexbox. So developers will have an easier time using the same grid system. Now, if I keep on adding, as you can see, it's adding just like you would do in auto layout. However, here there are various various other options that we can use from for example there is of course direction so you can choose that there is of course the number of grids you want here which is again not available with auto layout currently so if i want like four columns in our grid we can have four columns and then as you can see the as you can see the grids are in detail being created here if i double tap so here I can edit the grid sizes. So if I want one uh, column to be thinner than the other column, this would be perfect for bento grids. Now, something like this is achievable with auto layout, but it doesn't translate well to code and it sometimes does not work like we want to, especially in responsive mode and stuff like that. Each asset inside here can also be changed to auto, manual, and of course, covering a certain area with area names, something that you'll get to see with things like Framer or Webflow. So Webflow does use this area name concept and grid layout, CSS grid layout concept. I wish auto layout worked kind of like this. It would have been so much better. Especially for newcomers, this would have been much, much easier to do. All right, so I'm bringing something really cool for you guys in this video, thanks to our sponsors, BenQ. Now they have a set of new designer focused monitors and displays for your desktop or for your home. Their BenQ PD3225U monitor is an absolutely perfect 4K monitor for your creative and daily use as well. And it's big enough for me to open multiple tasks. And on one side, I'm editing a video, the other side, I'm filling out a document for my work. Now, most designers these days use Macs and MacBooks for their creative work. Keeping that in mind, BenQ has made sure that these displays are perfectly compatible with your Macs, can easily and quickly connect with a USB-C connector directly to the display. And of course, it has the Thunderbolt 3 compatibility as well. And because of its 98% accuracy P3 display technology, it can match the color profile of your MacBook automatically, especially if you have the Display Pilot 2 software by BenQ installed on the system. And for the first time ever, BenQ has come up with the IPS black technology, which means that even though it's a color accurate IPS display, it gives you 35% deeper black levels as compared to a traditional IPS display. To add to the already great value of this display, they've also tied up with Pantone colors to give you a Pantone Connect premium subscription worth $90 for absolutely free with the displays as well. Their designer series houses various different monitors apart from the one that I've shown here that range from all different price points, capabilities, features, etc. So you can choose amongst all different value propositions and you can bring home the best technology under different price points. I've used this monitor for almost a month now. Go ahead, check the monitor out with the link in the description. Also check out the entire range as well if you'd like and make sure for your next monitor purchase, you do choose BenQ's designer series for sure. And of course, if you're ever confused about a feature, PenPod does this really cool thing that it has with the news features specifically. It has these little question marks and it brings you to a user guide 
you kind of go through the entire user guide, how to use it, how developers can use it. I think that's a nice little touch. Another cool thing is the Z index. So Flex Elements has a Z index with it. This is 20 and there's another element with 10. It will appear behind that other element. The next feature is so helpful for teams and developers. We have dev mode in Figma. So I would say which is not very far away from what they're doing here in Penpot, but their Penpot implementation is very, very accurate. So. If I have something like this, I have these multiple boxes here, different colors, whatever, okay? Uh, if I have elements like this here, I go into inspect. I can select any aspect of it, including the grid. So here, if I just go to in inspect and I go inside code and just copy the CSS, take it into code pen, just paste the CSS here and do the same with HTML, of course, should ideally just give me the exact thing that I got with, as you could see, with Penpot. So if this was more complex, they would have given me more complex code. Obviously, I'm just showing this for example. Maybe you guys should try it out and see how this works for yourself, for your own design. I like that you don't have to go into a dev mode or like a different kind of place to get the code and to work with the code. The developers can get a better understanding from right here itself. Now, Penpot has made components very efficient, very effective. If you use components on a daily basis or if you have a design. Now, the third feature that I recently discovered, which I'm not sure they, uh, they did with 2.0 or before that, is the selection feature. What's cool here is that you can actually change various aspects of the colors, including selection shadows and any other aspect or property of the design you find here. I can obviously remove the shadows from here or I I can actually change the shadow color. So the green shadow color can be changed to a blue shadow color, as you can see here, just like that. I can add the same type of blur to both, manipulate colors, shadows, everything together. Of course, Figma multi-select and multi-edit works very well in that case. However, in this case, they have inbuilt features like this. So you won't really need multi-edit here. Now, another thing that I found here, which is much easier to do now, inside the assets panel here, it is so much easier to add your custom assets quickly and easily, especially if you're not trying to create an entire design system, having it in one place, this is so much easier to have it here. Now, I'm not going to include all the features, but this one, I had to give a shout out. It's not a feature exactly. It is the openness that the design team at Penpot has with people like us, with the users. There is of course, all the updates that are listed here. If I go into one of these, Penpot's entire team's goals and tasks and everything are laid out to the public right here. As you can see, they are developing it consistently. All these new design changes have been done, which is really cool, but a lot of them are ready for q a so if you want a new feature tell you where the new feature is they're not hiding anything from you this is something that i find with closed companies like figma they're hiding how much uh, how much time it will take for a new feature they want to keep everything in the quiet open source tools like this keep everything out there and they want to kind of showcase their progress with you which i think is a huge huge win for the open source industry which is insane you would never find this in public but there's this public and they're making it available for everyone.